Let's talk ciprofloxacin. Trade name is Cipro. Okay, so that's really easy to remember. Cipro, ciprofloxacin. The indication for this medication is it's pretty broad spectrum antibiotic. Okay, it's given for UTIs, gonorrhea, respiratory tract infections, bronchitis, pneumonia, skin and bone infections, infectious diarrhea, and abdominal infections. So it has a very broad spectrum. So it can be given for a lot of reasons in a lot of locations. So you're definitely going to see this medication regardless of where you work. The way that it actually works in the body is that it inhibits its bacterial DNA synthesis. Okay, so by inhibiting the synthesis of that DNA, we actually kill the bacteria and we control the infection. So therapeutic class is anti-infective, pharmacologic class is fluoroquinolone. So one thing to keep in mind here with fluoroquinolone is your fluoroquinolones are going to cause this QT prolongation. Okay, so our concern when we're causing with any sort of medication that causes a QT prolongation is that it can lead to severe arrhythmias. Okay, so if we have a patient who already has a slow heart rate, very bradycardic, or already has a prolonged QT, if we begin to prolong that QT anymore, we can actually cause VTAC. Okay, so we really want to watch out for our patients with these prolonged QT already in their EKG. Okay. And you really just, this is just something you kind of need to know about your patient, especially if you're in a situation where you do have cardiac monitoring um, and you can see their QT, just kind of keep an eye on it. If it's, if it's long, if we begin to stretch that out, I mean, think about what that looks like. If you stretch that, that out, it's actually VTAC, right? So be very, very careful in those types of patients, obviously contraindicated in allergies. Um, and keep in mind that this can cause seizures, arrhythmias, pseudomembranous colitis, which is, you know, your C. diff, anaphylaxis, Stevens-Johnson syndrome. We talk about this all the time. I'm going to say it again. Stevens-Johnson syndrome is like the sloughing off of the skin. If you see it one time, you will never forget it. Um, it may decrease the effects of phenytoin. Okay. If you're dilantin there and you're going to want to monitor your renal level, you're also going to want to assess the infection. We talk about this with every single antibiotic. You want to assess the infection prior to giving the medication. So you can simply do that by obtaining blood cultures, or nasal cultures, or sputum cultures, whatever it is that you're trying to treat, whatever looks suspicious, urine cultures, whatever it is, um, you obtain those cultures prior to beginning therapy. You also want to monitor liver function tests as this can really uh, alter liver function, okay? That is ciprofloxacin. Again, tr uh, trade name is Cipro. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG. To keep the learning going, head over to medmastercourse.com and use the coupon code podcast. MedMaster Course is the ultimate guide to nursing pharmacology with over 30 hours of video and audio lecture material. Never guess a med again, crush the NCLEX, and have confidence in your nursing pharmacology skills. Head over to medmastercourse.com, use the coupon code podcast. We'll see you on the inside.